Hello, my name is Marcus. I'm the compiler of a collection of therapy quotes entitled Psychoanalytic Self-Awareness Quotes. This is TQ23, therapy quote number 23. Through their behavior or by distortion of external situations, Neurotics unconsciously provoke disappointment, identifying the outer world with the refusing pre oedipal mother. Repressing their initial provocation, they become pseudo-aggressive, behaving with righteous indignation and seemingly in self-defense. After experiencing the rebuff, they feel victimized and self-pitying. So this author is describing a major part of burglar's theory, um, and um, it, it's I'm using this quote as a follow-up to the last video, uh, TQ22, uh, uh, regarding that example about the gambler, uh, the guy projects mother onto the casino. He thinks the casino is his mother now, and now the casino is going to refuse him, just like his mother refused him. And he's, he's caught in that repetition compulsion. Um, the jargon here is, uh, he, the quote says, pre oedipal mother. All that means is it's before 18 months. So when you, when you whenever the phrase pre oedipal comes, it just means before 18 months. Because there's a very, the focus it's a two-person psychology from birth to 18 months. It's just the baby and the mom primarily. So they call that the two-person psychology. And, that's, that's the, so. and then from 18 onwards, then the dad kind of enters the picture or the external world enters the picture. So now there's three uh, involved. That's called like a three-person psychology. Then they call that the Oedipal. It's just a metaphor. I'm not using these terms uh, in a stereotypical way. It's just uh, more basic, right, about the age. So um, this quote talks about how in the case of the casino, there was something there. The person projected onto the casino, the mother, right, and then the mother refused him. Um, you know, I didn't know this, but apparently these slot machines are sometimes referred to as fruit machines. <laughs> So that, that's pretty, it's even more clear, the fruit machine. Because <laughs> food and love are together, right? Um, a traumatized child very much associates food with love, love with food. There's even a slogan out there, when food is love. So, so I think some self-help author entitled a book, When Food is Love. Or um, that's, especially the key. that's especially the case when... Um, Whenever, whenever the mother responds with food, uh, the child the child closely associates mom with food because that's the theory, anyways. Um, and when the child's uncomfortable, the mom gives him food, so he links the food and the mom kind of thing. So in this quote, it talks about how, let's say there isn't. A ready-made thing out there that's that's the, the, the neurotic can project mother onto so then they'll provoke uh, the other person to be refusing like the casino <laughs> uh, let's read it one more time so through their behavior or by distortion of external situations, neurotics unconsciously provoke disappointment, identifying the outer world with the refusing pre oedipal mother. Repressing their initial provocation, they become pseudo-aggressive, behaving with righteous indignation and seemingly in self-defense. After experiencing the rebuff, they feel victimized and self-pitying. 
Actually, this quote pretty much uh, summarizes uh, much of Bergler's main theory in the area of uh, self-defeating behavior. So, Bergler, so this describes basically self-defeating behavior um, because of the repetition compulsion. So remember, the, the baby came out of the womb and had needs. The needs were refused, and then the baby couldn't protest about it. Now they're an adult. Now they're protesting. Now they're, right? So, um, I think Berger calls this the misuse of reality. So let's say, um, I don't know, let, let's say the, 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 the girl is on a date with her boyfriend, it's their second date or something, <laughs> whatever. Um, but she's unconsciously projecting the mom onto the guy, let's say. Um, of course it can be the other way around. It doesn't, it's not about gender. Right? Um, and then, uh, so she'll project mom onto the guy, uh, provoke him to make him, maybe repel him, to make him uh, refuse her. And then she can get, now she can argue and scream and protest because that's what she couldn't do when she was refused as a baby. Right, so she's recreating that scene. Right? So this, the original scene was the baby had a need, it got refused, and then the baby wanted to protest but couldn't. Okay, fast forward 35 years, the lady's in the coffee shop with the guy, it's her second date, she projects the mother onto him. Uh, maybe he's being nice at first, but then she'll sabotage it, she'll do something to make him upset or whatever, be passive aggressive, become an hour late, come an hour, or do something, provoke, then he gets annoyed, now she can say, oh, he's refusing me, just like mother refused me, aha, now's my chance to protest, now she's gonna fight back and complain to him, you, you this, you that, you this, so this is, she's doing now what she couldn't do when she was three weeks old, right? So this is the theory. I know it sounds odd. I know it sounds, uh, even I say it now, I, I know it sounds, come, it'll come across as odd. But we're talking about, uh, it's a theory. It's, 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 a, it's a theory of what's going on in the unconscious that's causing the self-sabotaging -sabota self behavior. Why is the girl sabotaging this day? What, what is she doing? Why is she provoking a fight? And then she, so she can have the excuse to become, quote, pseudo-aggressive. So that's an example of pseudo-aggressive. Is she really being aggressive? You know what I mean? She's not really being assertive. Like, she's not protecting herself. She's replaying a, tra a traumatic scene. So, she, so that's why Bergler calls it a pseudo-aggressive thing, to distinguish it from, you know, genuine uh, self-protection and whatnot. And then... Um, and then what happens is, so the guy, so after it's all over, uh, then she feels that she's the victim and she feels sorry for herself. So again, that's how the baby felt. The baby had a need, it was refused, he wanted to protest, he couldn't. Now the baby feels sorry for himself. Oh, poor me, right? Um, so it's a theory. Um, there aren't many theories out there that explain self-defeating behavior, self-sabotaging behavior. This to, this, to my, in my impression, is still the best one out there. This was written back in the, in the 40s, I think. Berger came up with this. He started writing this in the 30s, actually. And he refined it over the years. I think it's a good quote. Uh, if it's okay, I'll read it one more time. Through their behavior or by distortion of external situations. Okay, so that's that's an example of when Berger says they miss the misuse of reality. They're, they're misusing the situation, right? So she's on a date with the guy, and she's misusing that, right? Okay, so neurotics, 
unconsciously provoke disappointment. Okay, again, so that's to replay the past trauma. And how did she do it? She did it by identifying the outer world, or in this case, the, the guy, uh, the second date guy, with, she identified him with the refusing uh, birth to 18 month uh, mother, right? The pre-edible mother. The, the, the pre-edible means from birth to 18 months. Now she, but she's not aware that she's doing this, repressing their initial provo provocation. So she doesn't, she's not aware that she's doing this. Okay, so she doesn't admit that she's being provocative. Then she becomes pseudo-aggressive. Now she can fight back. Remember, the baby couldn't protest. Now she's protesting. So she becomes pseudo-aggressive. That's the protest of the baby uh, now coming out, sort of like a delayed reaction, right? 30-year, 30 35-year delayed reaction. Okay, again, behaving with righteous indignation. So again, that's the baby saying, hey, mom, you're supposed to feed me. I'm hungry. What are you doing? Da, 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 da. Okay, and it appears like, uh, yeah, and, and she's making it look like she's protecting herself, right? Finally, at the end of it all, uh, the guy has lost interest, so she has repeated, she, so that's the self-defeating behavior. She repeated it. Now she feels uh, victimized and self-pitying. So that's, that's the sequence, that's the theory. Um, I think it's worth, you know, I think it's worth uh, some consideration. I'll bring this up. Now this whole thing is called, Bergener calls this pseudo-aggression as a defense against psychic masochism. It sounds elaborate, but, or just broadly, psychic, masoch psychic masochism. Um, the overall, the overall picture, right? And, um, yeah, it's interesting. Is it true? Uh, you know, like psycho psychology, the inner world, it's, it's all by inference. It's all by guesswork. And was it this? Was it that? It's all, and some people try to see if they can make us be more specific about it. Um, so it's generally considered a, a cross between science and art, right? somewhere in the middle. Anyways, um, I thought this was a, a very good quote that summarized, uh, that summarizes Brooker's theory of psychic masochism. Um, again, that phrase, it sounds loaded. It just means that the child's original life force got mixed in with the pain of the mother refusing the child, as well as the pain of the child not being able to, not having the motor skills to, to react. 35 years later, okay, in this case, the, the woman is going to try to repeat that scene. So she's going to create it. She's going to invent it. She's going to insult the guy, make him angry. <laughs> Aha, now she's, okay, now you're, in her unconscious, she sees the mother refusing him. And that's why She's un now she's going to fight back. So she created an excuse so she could fight back, so she can do the protest that she couldn't do back when she was three. Hold on, pause one second. Hold on. Oh, there's the blue jay of happiness. In a, in a previous... Well, that's the second appearance. In an earlier video, uh, the blue bird of happiness made an appearance. So uh, we got our en encore appearance from the Blue Jay of Happiness. Um, I looked that up, by the way. The Bluebird was originally a play, like 130, 40 years ago. It's, it's a very old play. And then it, then it became a silent movie. I think they made two silent movies. And then like a few other movies, including the one with Shirley Temple that I mentioned. And... Um, and yeah, so it's uh, it's uh, it, it's 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 um, so uh, maybe in future videos the blue bird of happiness will will return. We'll see. Okay, thank you very much. This has been TQ twenty three, the third quote on Edmund Berger. Bye bye for now. Thank you.